yo, what is going on everyone? This is your host, Chardonnay Rod, and you are now listening to another episode of To Broadcast. For all the new listeners who are listening in for the very first time, welcome. For all of the returning listeners coming back for another week of To Broadcast, welcome back. At To Broadcast, you can take everything we say with a grain of salt. We simply just want to add some flavor to your meal. So if we are doing that, then we are doing our job. I've got a wonderful episode prepared for you guys. And it's wonderful because I have not prepared for it. But I want to share some things that for me are very important. And so without further ado, today's topic is the value of vulnerability. This is Tarotcast. Let's get it. Everybody, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Tarodcast. I am your host, Chardonnay Rod. Now, I've done an episode in the past and I was under the influence of some Chardonnay. And apparently, people liked when I was under the influence of Chardonnay. So Chardonnay Rod is going to be taking the reins over this episode today. So I hope that you all are good to go regarding this episode. Hopefully you all enjoy it because this is something that for me... Whenever I get this way, whenever I have some Chardonnay in my system, I feel like I can talk for hours and hours and hours. And so we're going to try and condense Chardonnay Rod into 45 minutes. But welcome to Tarodcast. I'm very glad that you all are here. And I want to handle some house cleaping while I have you all at this moment. So um we've got some reviews we've got some reviews for our podcast that popped up on itunes and i'd like to read those reviews because reviews again as you've heard so many times in our commercial break reviews allow us the opportunity to be placed in front of people who may not have had the opportunity to hear an episode of Tarotcast. And so for everybody who has left a review, thank you so much. I'm going to take just a couple of moments just to read you all's reviews. So that way you all get the proper credit in helping us to elevate our show to a place where more people have access to it. So I want to start with our very first review. Now, forgive me, this review was actually left in 2019 when we first started to broadcast, but I want to go ahead and read it. And this review says, this is a must the pilot episode was great. I enjoyed Tarod's introduction. Looking forward to what's next. So I know who reviewed that podcast um, or, or I know who, who gave that review. So I just want to say thank you very much just for for leaving that review. I appreciate it. I know who you are. You know who you are. So thank you for leaving that review. The next review comes from Tandra. And she says, keep it up. I just started listening to Tarod's podcast and I enjoy it. So Tandra, thank you so much for leaving that review. We appreciate it. I love that you are enjoying the content that we're making. And this inspires us to continue doing this even more. And the latest review was from Jay Mims. And this one, the the subject line is is a purple heart and a gold heart. And it's five stars as well. And she simply says, my guy. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Jay Mims, thank you so much for leaving your review and just for contributing to 
to Rodcast being a rising podcast for not only Oklahoma City, but for podcasts in general. And so if you are out there and you are loving what you're hearing, do not hesitate to leave us a five star review. We appreciate it. We love it. And we thank you for it. So there might be a contest. Actually, I announced this already, but there is a contest for those who are leaving reviews. And so if you want more information on that contest, just make sure to hit me up somewhere on social media and I'd be more than happy to give you those details. So with the reviews out the way, I next want to go into the the black owned businesses that are supporting to Rodcast. And so you all have heard me talk about the resilient Lotus before. If you're in the market for natural oils for both your hair and skin, hit up the resilient Lotus at www.theresilientlotus.com. And also if you love salsa, if you are a salsa lover, hit up Morenita Salsitas. Her chunky salsas are amazing. I just got another batch today, and it is a mango salsa. It's it's what you call it, the sweet heat. Oh my god, it is it is so good. It's really good. I don't know what y'all are waiting on because this these salsas. You know what? Just just check the episode notes. Make sure if you are in Oklahoma City, you place your order now because these salsas are amazing. So I just want to say a big to Rodcast shout out to Morenita Salsitas as well as the Resilient Lotus, two black owned businesses that have supported to Rodcast and I want to return the favor. So make sure you all check the episode notes and find them. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the value of vulnerability. And so for me, when I think of vulnerability, I think of being in a place in your mind and in your heart where you are your most open, you are your most exposed. It is a place inside of you that when you give someone access to this place, it's because you trust them. You trust in who they are. You trust in in, in what they bring to the table. You trust that they can take these parts of you and guard them and honor them and, and uplift you. Because they are giving you their most true, their most bare, their most naked self. I was talking with a friend of mine this this past weekend, and she told me that for her, cooking is one of the most vulnerable things that she can do. And she doesn't classify herself as a master chef, but she enjoys cooking for those that she wants to spend time with. And when I think about this, when I think about this being an extension of someone, some someone who wants to put themselves out there in a way where they have the capability of being judged, I find that that type of action, that type of display is something that it it, it really strikes my heart because for me, a vulnerability of mine is dancing. I'm not a dancer, but as Chardonnay Rod... I I like to dance. I'm not I'm not out here like Chris Chaos. I'm not out here like Chris Brown. I'm not out here like Omarion. But if I get to a point where my body just says dance and I and I do it, I follow up on that and I just allow it to encompass me, then I dance and I enjoy what I'm doing. And for me, dancing has always been a vulnerability. Another vulnerability of mine is writing, my writing. I just finished my first erotic novelette and a few people have had the opportunity to read it. And for me, words have always been something that I have used to express my my fullest self, my truest self. Anybody that knows me knows that words 
to me are my superpower. And so my ability to use words and to potentially catapult someone into a story that I created and then to let them read it and and, and hopefully go into that same realm that I was going in. To me, that, that is a vulnerability of mine. But at the same time, I realize who I can trust when it comes to that type of vulnerability. And so for me, as I think about vulnerabilities, I think about the parts of all of us that we oftentimes keep secret, the the parts of us that are only reserved for us. And as I think about those parts, for all of us, there are many different things out here that tie in to the parts of us that we want to keep secret, the parts of us that we can only trust with a certain number of people. And when I when I further reflect on those things within myself, I realize that for me, I I I I, I my love language for me is physical touch. And so if I have the opportunity to express that, now I'm not talking about just touching everybody or or being a pervert or anything like that. I'm talking about being able to allow my body to show a person that I am in this moment with them. It could be a shoulder touch. It could be a handshake. It could be a hug, you know, things like that. For me, that is a vulnerability because I don't believe that everybody will will get that or honor that or, or be able to reciprocate that or understand what that means. And so for me, physical touch is also a vulnerability for me. And so I take that very seriously. And for those who I have the closest relationships with, they understand that for me, that is an extension of how I feel. That is an extension of who I am. And they have access to that vulnerable side of me. And so because of that, I I realize the relationships that I have with others there is a there is a level there is a certain there is a certain um what's the word i'm looking for there is a there is a a a certain way that i am with certain people who know me on this vulnerable level and i feel like i have the confidence to express that without fear of being judged or without fear of my vulnerabilities being used against me and for me that is something that gives me so much peace that i feel like i am able to just just be who i am and because of that, I find those relationships to be so much more fulfilling, so much more um, um, accepting. There's less judgment there. And because of that, I, I understand that this person sees me on this level and they've chosen to honor and to take care of the things that I have given them from me. And in turn, as a person, I want to be able to do the same for them. And so for me, that is my goal. That is my mission when it comes to vulnerability, because so many of us possess so many things that we feel that we cannot show other people just in regular life. You know what? That is okay. That is okay, because when it comes to just living regular life, not everybody is designed to handle what you are and who you are and the things that give your life meaning and purpose, the things that come from you, those soft spots that really define who you are. And so I know for me, another vulnerability is my music. You know, I am a rapper that's not a rapper. I told y'all I would go into that on another episode. Unfortunately, this is also not the episode where I go deeper into that. But my music is such a huge part of me. Even though I'm not a, a, a mainstream rapper, I'm not 
performing in different places. I'm not trying to push my music on a whole bunch of people yet. Um, I'm not trying to get new listeners at this moment. The music that I create, excuse me, is something that for me comes from a place in my heart and my mind that allows me to tap into my creativity. And when I tap into my creativity, there are things that emerge from that. And those things that emerge are are ideas and concepts that I hope that my listeners will enjoy. And so I have to be receptive of that feedback. A lot of a lot of artists, if you are an artist or you know an artist, a lot of artists are sensitive about their work. Now, this isn't just in the music industry. This is this is artists who consider themselves painters or sculptors or or they 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 do line art or digital art or music or poetry, whatever the case may be. Artists are completely sensitive about the art that they create because they know the place where it came from and they want other people to understand the place where their art came from. And when somebody doesn't feel that, it's offensive. Not going to lie, it is offensive because you, you think about the place in which your art comes from and you realize that there are certain people in the world who will not get it. And that's okay. That's okay because not everybody in this world is designed to understand the place in which your art come from, comes from, which your art and your vulnerability comes from. But the fact that you decided to put this out there in a way where it can be consumed by others and for others to actually gain a feeling from that, that's who you do it for. That's who you who you create your art for. And as an artist, I understand that mindset completely. Unfortunately, there are some people who don't get it. But that's okay. Not everybody is is wired to understand who you are. They're not supposed to. They have their own people that they are consumed with. And so if you're not one of those people, that's okay. Focus on the ones that are consumed with what you create. And there your vulnerability will be validated. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of places where we can go with vulnerability. And just just over the last 18 minutes, um, I, I wanted to just paint a picture of what vulnerability could look like because it has so many different forms. It has so many ways it can be shown. And, and as an artist, as a content creator, even doing this podcast is something that is very vulnerable to me. Because I am sharing pieces of my life. I'm sharing pieces of my mind with listeners. And all of you who are listening right now, I'm hoping that with everything that I'm doing right now, there is something that you can feel, something that you can grasp, something that you can take away from this medium. And that is my goal. If it doesn't happen, I can accept that. For those who actually do gain something from this, then just know that you share in one of the most vulnerable ways that I can be as a person. And so with that being said, we're going to take our break. And then after our break, we're going to go into more about vulnerability because Chardonnay Rod is here. <laughs> Chardonnay Rod is here. And, and I feel like he is going to just go ahead and just talk and talk and talk. So make sure you all have something close by that you can drink. Stay hydrated, and when we come back, we're going to go deeper into vulnerability. And I wanna, I, I wanna go into it basically on the on the relationship side because we're all about strengthening relationships here. And so that's how we are going to attack this particular episode. So this is to Rodcast. Make sure you have your bottle of water or your wine or your glass of Chardonnay, whatever it is. Make sure you have that close by, and we. We'll be right back. Yeah. 
Yo, what's good, everyone? This is your host of Tarod Cast, Tarod Rashawn, and I just want to welcome you to the commercial break. Now, you already know what time it is. It's hydration time. Get some high-quality H2O in your system now. Got a few things I'd like to go over. First, to all of our new and returning listeners, thank you so much for your ear and your time. To all of our Patreon supporters, I just want you to know that we are not able to do this without your direct support. So the biggest, dopest Tarod Cast thank you goes out to you. You. If you're listening in and you're thinking about becoming part of the Tarodcast Patreon family, we'd love to have you. You can find us at www.patreon.com forward slash Tarodcast. Now on Patreon, we have three tiers of support. A $2 tier, a $3 tier, and lastly, a $6 tier. Each tier comes with its own set of unique perks. So if you find one that fits you, sign up. For us, the main thing is keeping our subscription prices affordable. We know that you work hard for your money, and if you choose to support to Ridecast this way, we truly want to make it worth your time. To find out more about our Patreon and the perks with each tier, visit www.patreon.com forward slash to Ridecast. We've got it all laid out for you. Also, We've got a merchandise store. Pick up some tees, hoodies, leggings, and more at forevercertain.redbubble.com. All proceeds go right back into the Tarodcast podcast and allow us to keep making high-quality content for people just like you. For our listeners out there who would like to support us in a non-monetary way, we'd love that too. Share our show with people you know. Also, share us on your social media. And if your favorite to Rodcast streaming service allows you to rate and review our show and you're loving what you're hearing, take some time and leave us a five-star review. Ratings and reviews are what set us apart from other podcasts and also helps us to recommend our podcast to other listeners we otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to reach. Lastly, if you'd like to reach out to us directly, email us at tarodcast at certainty.com. That's tarodcast at crtn-t.com. All of this information can always be found in our episode notes, so make sure to check there if you forget any of the information we just went over. Once again, thank you all so much, and let's get back to the program. Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to To Rodcast. Again, I'm your host, Chardonnay Rod, and we are talking about the value of vulnerability. So, as I think about vulnerability, I, I think about the fact that in relationships, oftentimes we find ourselves with someone and we're trying to figure out the right time and place to express something that truly defines us. We, we want to express something that explains a side of us that very few people would get, but we're hoping that the person that we are with will understand and honor and value. And this this actually goes back to how I feel about love, where, where I feel like love Love is giving someone every piece of you, every part of you that could potentially destroy you, but trusting them not to. And I feel like this goes hand in hand with vulnerability because when you are at your most vulnerable, it's not that you are at your most weakest point, but you are at your most exposed. You're laying it all on the table. You're laying your entire being, your essence on the table. And you're hoping that the person that you are displaying this to will understand it. They will honor it. They will treasure it. They will protect it. And for me, I feel like when it comes to being vulnerable, that is the part of us that really and truly should be protected at all costs. Because our vulnerability, the things that make us vulnerable, the things that we don't expect other people to get about us, those are the things that we are looking for people to understand. We are looking for people to accept. And that process can be very, very tiring. 
Because oftentimes, as we read people, as we look at people, as we see people for who they really are, sometimes there are certain people we we come into contact with and they just don't get it. They may be good for a specific purpose or for a specific situation, but they are not equipped to handle the deepest and sometimes the darkest parts of you. And you know what? That's okay. These people have their own lane. And so it is our job to make sure that they stay in that lane because you have to understand that certain people are not equipped to handle everything that you are. And they are only able to process certain parts of you. And that's okay. That's okay. If they get those sides of you, then that's okay. But when it comes to sharing the parts of you that that reach down to the to the darkest pits of your soul, there are only a a select few people. These could be friends. These could be family. These could be people you are romantically linked with. There are a certain number of people that when it comes to those deep, dark parts of yourself, that you can actually show them these parts and they will be able to understand and accept that. And so identifying these people is what's key to making sure that you maintain your own sanity. Because to be quite honest, to to, to go through life and to know that there are certain things about yourself that, that you have yet to share with others and to feel like you can't share those parts of yourself with others, that is a that is a very, a very, very depressing experience because you feel like there are people out here who just don't get you. And I know what that feels like. Because for me, if there's if there's one thing, if there's one thing that I know about myself is that I wear my heart on my sleeve. My emotions are not hard to read at all. I don't possess the mental capability to play games. I don't possess the mental capability to be aloof. I don't I don't possess that. And so when it comes to my emotions, since they are such an integral part of me, when I share my emotions with someone else, it's because I'm hoping that they will understand this display of my own vulnerability because it takes a lot for me to hold back my emotions, to pretend that they don't exist because that is simply a countermeasure to who I really am. And so if I have the opportunity to show someone the full range of my emotions. Now, I'm not talking about just 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 exploding in a fit of anger or just crying for no reason, but really giving someone the opportunity to see me at the deepest, darkest parts of myself, the parts of me that allow me to express myself and allow me to cry, allow me to feel. I'm talking about those parts. If I allow someone into that realm, then it's because to me, I feel like I am at a point with this particular person where they have earned that ability to see me like that. And I feel like one of the things that 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 we sometimes don't take into consideration is that people do have to earn our vulnerability. Because even though for me, and I can only speak for myself, I can only speak for Chardonnay Rod here, but but people who have not earned the right to experience you at your most vulnerable state don't deserve it. And I know for me, even though there's a part of me that 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 wears my emotions on my sleeve, I don't have a, a, a very a very dense emotional filter. Pretty much what you see is what you get. 
And so when it when it comes to things like that, those who I actually express that to, I expect that they will be able to not only respect that, but at some point reciprocate that to me because I value what it means to be vulnerable. I value the effort it takes to express that to someone. And because I value that, I expect that. I don't think it's unfair to expect that. But I also realize that a lot of people run into issues where they are led on to believe that they can be vulnerable with someone, but in doing so, they get betrayed. And I understand where that comes from. I understand how that comes into play because there are people out here who are leeches. There are people out here who are vampires. There are people out here who want to be manipulators and they are able to trigger, in a sense, someone's trust to make them feel like they can expose those most vulnerable parts of themselves with them. But in turn, they're using that as ammo to fire back at them when the moment is right. And those people to me are probably the most toxic people you could ever encounter. And when you meet those people, if you meet those people, they should be avoided like the coronavirus. They should because they are not going to do anything for your life but cause you trouble and mayhem and pain and all this extra. And you do not need that. When it comes to vulnerability, you need to have someone that can honor that, that can respect that, that can treasure that, that can hold that within them and see that as a beautiful part of you. Because when it comes to people like that, they are the ones who they don't have to go through so many different hoops and ladders to get you to express this part of you with them. Because for you, it feels natural. For you, it's freeing to express that to them because something in your heart, something in your soul, something in your spirit allows you to express that to them with no barrier to entry. And that is only something that you can decipher within yourself. One of our biggest words here on Taradcast is introspection. You have to be able to get to a point where you can think within yourself and and, and find that part of yourself that allows you to express that to someone that you deem worthy. They have to be worthy of it. And that's the key. They have to be worthy. It don't matter if they look good. It don't matter if they check off every tick mark on the physical specimen checklist that you're looking for. They have to be worthy as a person. Their soul has to connect with yours in a way that gives you complete freedom. That's what I believe. And so with that being said, I'm going to expand on this shortly after our next break because Chardonnay Rod has to make sure he is taking his breaks so that way he doesn't just talk and talk and talk. I know y'all are here to listen to him, but he also has to take his breaks too. So we're going to come back after a short break. And with that, we're going to expand on this because this is such a wonderful topic. And I want to make sure that he goes into this in a way where when it ends, You are validated. You are blessed. You have something you can take with you. So this is to Rodcast. We're going to take our last break and we'll be right back.
All right, y'all, welcome back to Tarodcast. This is your host, one more time, Tarod, I can't talk because Chardonnay Rod has completely taken over. So, yeah, we're back and we are going to continue talking about vulnerability. So, when it comes to vulnerability, one of the biggest things that I realize is the fact that, again, Vulnerability is only reserved for those who can reciprocate their vulnerability back to you. It is something that allows you to understand the most intimate parts of a person, the most unfiltered, the most raw parts of a person. And when you have the opportunity to experience that, to experience them opening up their heart to you. This is when you gain a higher level of appreciation, a deeper level of understanding when it comes to another person. Like I was saying before, when when I was speaking with a, a good friend of mine and she was telling me that cooking is something that makes her feel incredibly vulnerable, when I realized what it was that she was telling me, she was telling me that when it comes to her specific way that she likes to show people those parts of herself, She wants to be able to do it in a way that everything that she is as a person is understood. And in this medium, it's through food. It's through something that allows someone to be filled, to be full, to be satisfied. And to look at her and to realize that you made this for me. The way that this tasted, the way that this filled my body and soul was satisfying and I thank you and I appreciate you for that. When I when I think about this in this time, I realize that that is what it means. It's about having and and and, and being able to create a connection with someone that 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 gives them that ability to see you in a way that adds to who you are, in a way that confirms things about who you are. And I and I and I realize that when it comes to vulnerability, this is one of the hardest things that we can try and, and, and focus in on. This is one of the hardest things that we can ever think to do because so many people out here are not equipped to handle those parts of ourselves. But again, I must say that that is okay. I have to say that that is completely fine because when it comes to weeding out the people that are not meant for your vulnerability, it becomes an easier process because once you start to understand the parameters you need to set within yourself in order to gauge whether or not a person is right or fit to accept your vulnerability, that process becomes something that does not take much effort in realizing. And so I I, I hope that with this episode, you realize that your vulnerability is valuable. It is something that not only must you protect, but you must also uplift within yourself. Your vulnerability is not something you need to be afraid of. It's not something that you have to hide away, but it is something that you have to decide who gets access to it. Think of it like a Netflix password. You have a Netflix account. You have all these movies. People can see what you've watched. People can see what you've been recommended based on your watch history. All kinds of stuff like that. So if you give someone your Netflix password, they now have the opportunity to log in and to not only see what you've watched, but to even pick up where you left off. And so think about who it is you're going to give your Netflix password to. If it's somebody who is going to judge you based on what you like and what you're interested in, they don't need to have it. You need to change that password. 
But if it's someone who can look and see that history and they will even take the time to go back and watch those movies for themselves to gain a better understanding of you. Ooh, ooh, I need to be a preacher. <laughs> if they can go back and, 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 and watch those things that you've watched to gain a better understanding of who you are as a person and they can value that. Then they are worth keeping in your circle. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. Because people out here, so many people have lost the ability to feel. They've lost the ability to just let themselves go, to feel the magic of people. And that saddens me because the magic of a person also comes from the vulnerability of a person. The magic of an artist comes from the vulnerability of that person. Being in a spot where they are giving you their full self. That is something that so many people do not. They don't even know what that means. And so for the people out here who get it, this is huge. This is incredible. This is who they are. And so with that being said, I want everyone to take an opportunity to just go within themselves and to find what makes them the most vulnerable, to find those pieces of themselves that, that, that defines who you are. To look at yourself and to understand that being vulnerable and accepting your vulnerability, it does not make you weak. As a matter of fact, it is quite the opposite because there is strength in vulnerability. There is strength in accepting that. There is strength when it comes to being confident enough to display this part of yourself with another person that gets it, that understands it, that honors it, that treasures it, that values it, that sees you as a complete and full person, that sees you as somebody worth loving and appreciating. That is a person that will understand the value of your vulnerability. So with that being said, y'all, that is our show. I hope you all enjoyed it. Time flew by. When Chardonnay rods on the microphone, time flies by. But I just want to say thank you for listening. As you already know, I hope that this episode gives you something to think about. I hope that you take the time to be more introspective and vulnerable with yourself, to know who you are, to love who you are, and to trust in who you are. You are worth something. Your vulnerability is powerful. Your vulnerability is something worth treasuring. And I hope that you believe that. I hope that you take that as we conclude our episode today. And with that being said, I hope that you find everything that you need and that you make every effort to find and keep your peace. I'm out, y'all. Till next time.